two games of the series, and Chris Paul is back. All our guys are back together, and he's the guy. Bombs to the rim. Punched into the Andre eight. Was inside for the slam. They can't be the more desperate team. Oh, he banks it in. It's good. The Clippers are the hardest working team on the court tonight. We just play hard. It's win or go home, in my opinion, right now. I'm just leaving leave it on the floor. He is Jalen Rose. I am David Jacoby. We are Jalen and Jacoby. What is it what that up, we do? We got the people. Oh, what? They people want they want. Want. We have Super Bowl champion, playoff Lenny, Leonard Fournette, joining us on the show in mere minutes. However, we start the show with Game 3 in Los Angeles. A must win for the Clippers, and it was a win that they got against the Phoenix Suns. Jalen. What do you think of this performance from Los Angeles? To start the game, it was about the big fella, Zubac, mm-hmm. actually playing good defense, scoring the ball, grabbing boards. He had a double-double at a halftime. Paul George pe- performing like the best player on the Clippers, setting the tone. And how you end quarters really matters. When you have an emphatic dunk, that sends a message to your team and to the crowd. When you make a half-court shot, That's a banker. That sends a message. The opposite message that it sends when you miss two free throws at the end of a game. It was a must win for the Clippers. They stepped up and got it. Jalen, three years ago, I could never imagine saying this sentence, but the Phoenix Suns really missed campaign. Campaign, he's twisted an ankle, and he's key to this. I never would have thought that Chris Paul coming back into the game in the series and Devin Booker would combine to shoot 10 for 40 from the floor. What was it about the Clippers or what was it about those two that really just hurt them? Guard play is going to be crucial as you acknowledge. And without Chris Paul in game one, Devin Booker was historically dynamic. In game two, our guy, Champagne and Campaign mm-hmm. was awesome as well. In this game, the guard play failed the Clippers. CP3 and Booker, they struggled from the floor. Cameron Payne left the game in the third quarter with an injury. And the Clippers guards were the difference. The defense of Patrick Beverly making Devin Booker uncomfortable with that broken nose. And Terrence Mann in the third quarter attacking and being aggressive and scoring buckets. Those become difference-making things for the Los Angeles Clippers. And the defense of Nicholas Batum goes under the radar. His Mm. ability to guard multiple positions, block jump shots. I've seen him block a few jump shots in these playoffs. And that's really tough to do. So it was a complete team win by the L.A. Clippers. Jalen, you played so many years in the NBA. You're the best NBA analyst in the game. However, I have an expertise that that applies to this series unlike (laughs) no one else because I am the senior broken nose analyst. If you haven't noticed, my nose is on the wrong side of my face. So I want to talk to Devin Booker. First of all, Devin Booker, you should never have had your nose reset during the series because it's going to get broken again. Number two, Devin Booker, if you don't get it reset, you don't have to wear the mask. Wait until the off season to get it reset. When you put me and Devin Booker side by side, you can see clearly (laughs) <laughs> that we are on the same team. The nose should be in the middle of your face, but now it's on the side of your face. But I'll say this, Mr. Booker, take the mask off, dog. Take the mask off. If it gets broken again, it's broken again. You can get it reset again. I disagree. Again, but take the mask off. Why do you disagree? For comfort. And as I see that picture of Devin Booker, he's a combination of both of us. He looks like me from the forehead up and <laughs> you from the eyes down, in particular with that broken <laughs> nose. With that being said, It has to be there for comfort, Jacoby. We've seen so many players in the history of the league play with masks and be productive. And shout Mm -hmm. to Reggie Jackson, who you see continuing to be aggressive. He helped turn their series around and their season around in a lot of ways. But in all honesty, that broken nose is there for protection, Jacoby. Guys Mm -hmm. like Patrick Beverly, they're going to be whacking at it. Guys like Morris, they're going to be whacking at it. I understand what you're saying. But I off. feel you need the mask for protection. And Jalen, there was something I saw watching this game that was the most important footage of the entire game, and that was Kawhi Leonard. 
listen, I'm a dad, you're a dad, we spend time with our kids, but why was Kawhi Leonard up in a suite with his children instead of down on the floor. Do you know what that tells me? That tells me he is not coming back in this series. When I saw that footage, I said, this man is not coming back in that series. Why is he watching the game up there instead of down on the floor, Mr. Rose? I agree with you, Jacoby, and I'm happy that he is at the game to cheer for his teammates. It's great that he get a chance to spend time with his family. That's exactly why he chose to go home and be a member of the Clippers. But with that being said, that's the look of a man that ain't coming back this year, dog. Mm. That, that, that's what I see. He's dealt with that knee injury for multiple years. It flared up during these playoffs. And I'm pretty sure at all costs, he's trying to avoid surgery because he's already had it. And for me, that look is, hey, guys, this is where I'm going to be during your championship run. So if y'all go ahead and win this series, if y'all go ahead and win the championship, I'll, I'll take be the elevator right down. <laughs> I'll take the elevator down if y'all win the championship. Move my guys on. <laughs> well, Mr. Rose, one thing I know about players is they love to avoid surgery. You've needed surgery on your shoulder ever <laughs> since we started this show a decade ago, and you still haven't gotten it. That is the Western Conference Finals. However, it's now time to turn our attention to the Eastern Conference Finals. Tonight, we have game two between the Hawks and the Bucks. It is in Milwaukee, and that man, Trey Young, put on an absolute show in game one. What do the Bucks need to change in game two to even the series? The degrees of defending Trey Young. So he has unlimited range, which means you have to push up on him at half court. You can't, you can't allow him to just occupy that real estate. You got to try to get into him. The second thing, your bigs have to find a way to get up there on pick and rolls. They have to get up there. It's going to be less Lopez. It's going to be more Giannis at the five. You'll see yep. guys like Bobby Portis out there. You got to get up there on Trey Young. Bogdanovich has been dealing with a knee injury. There's no DeAndre Hunter. Is Cam Reddish going to return? You have to find a way to up in Trey Young. And he does it in all phases, Jacoby. His float game also is what was killer in the previous game. That giant killer, how he keeps his dribble alive. And then lastly, his unique ability to pass the basketball. When the last time you seen somebody with the flair of the dramatic, throwing it behind the back, doing the shimmy when they're open, throwing it off the backboard. I remember a time hmm. we were in college at Penn State. They just entered the Big Ten. Yeah. And... Somebody, I may have been me or Jimmy, threw it off the backboard to see where. To show you how much the game has changed, Steve Fisher, who I love and should be in the Hall of Fame, was so mad that he took <laughs> the participants out of the game. That's how much <laughs> things have changed in basketball. My favorite part about that story is you don't even know if it was you. You don't even know if it was you. That's my favorite part about that story. You're like, this happened. It could have been me. It might have been Jimmy. I don't really remember. But one thing that I'm encouraged if I'm a Bucks fan is Giannis. There was a couple times after timeouts when they ran pick and rolls with Giannis and he just got easy alley-oops. Like, there was a couple times during this game when they dialed something up and he's just like, oh, I'll just get an alley-oop off of that. Like, Giannis Antetokounmpo is a two-time MVP. A defensive player of the year. He needs to assert himself. And what they need to do is decide that they're going to live off of Giannis, getting these alley-oops, getting these easy buckets, because Chris Middleton hasn't been able to perform the way that they want him to. Drew Holiday had a great game one. Hopefully he can also show up in game two. I have the Bucks winning game two. What about you? I agree with you. And for me, the performance of Chris Middleton was the exception, not the rule. I mm. think he's going to respond. I don't think he's going to have more shot attempts then points. Drew Holiday played well, scoring over 30. That's something that you can draw upon. And I agree with you about your Giannis point. Watch, you're going to see Giannis defend and contest Trey Young a lot more in this game. And when he shoots it, he's going to run out and try to duck in and rim run. And so that's what you try to do. And that's what teams had been doing to the Hawks in the regular season these past couple of years, trying to get take advantage of those long rebounds and turn them into their big duck it in on the other end. So watch me Giannis trying to do a lot of that in this game. Jalen, we have Super Bowl champion 
Leonard Fournette of the LSU's Tampa Bay finest. Buccaneers joining us on the program in just mere minutes. Make sure you stay tuned to Jalen and Jacoby because that man is joining us right now.